the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, good morning, and welcome to this service of Holy Communion, which has been pre-recorded at St. Richard's Church. For this Feast of Epiphany, when we celebrate the arrival of the three Magi, the wise men who came from a land in the east and who arrived at the stable. Having traveled far, they arrived in Bethlehem in the stable to find the child Jesus and his mother, where they worshiped him and brought him gifts. So we start our service by singing, We Three Kings, as we bring the three kings to the stable in our crib. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we say together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And our New Testament reading comes from uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I, Paul, I am a prisoner for Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard on the commission of God's grace that was given me for you. And how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will 
enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant, according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ be upon my heart and upon my lips as I proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod they left for their own country by another road this is the gospel of the Lord How do we find our way? When I was much younger than I am now, I was a girl guide. I loved spending time out in the woods with the guides. Primarily, I think, because it meant spending time with a group of girls who were all very different, but became good friends as we worked together to solve challenges we were given. Often that would involve using various means to find our way through unknown terrain to where we would undertake unknown tasks. We were trained to use a map and a compass and how to find north and south so we could use a map without a compass, both during the day and at night. And to 
interpret signals and leave signals and signs for others as messages about which way we'd gone. And we'd learn to assess tracks in the snow to see how long they'd been there and use landmarks in nature for navigation. All in all, this made me quite comfortable finding my way in hilly or mountainous terrain, often without a map. But I still get caught out sometimes in landscapes without any of the familiar landmarks that I'm used to relying on. For instance, when I once found myself in urban areas in the Netherlands for three months with no hills, and to me, the streets and the canals all look the same. Elevation over sea level was obviously not something I could navigate by, and there was so much light at street level, the stars were impossible to see at night. When we're finding ourselves in completely unknown terrain, maps are good tools, and satnap. And of course, there's the age-old solution of asking someone local for directions. The Magi who traveled together from a distant land to worship the Christ child in the manger didn't have satnav, of course. And a map may not have been much use as they didn't know what their fin final destination would be. They had seen a star rise, knew that that had to mean a new king had been born. And so they set out to find him so they could worship him. But something happens. They'd followed the star such a long distance, and now, about five miles from Bethlehem, they go into Jerusalem, looking for the new king. So close to their destination, they take the wrong turn. And I wonder why. What could have caused them to lose their focus on the star they'd been following faithfully for so long. Was it physically difficult to see the star with all the lights from the big city, drown, drowning out the lights from the star? Or did they get distracted by the splendor of the big city? Was the prospect of a good night's sleep in a comfortable bed in a palace somewhere, so tempting that their wishful thinking drew them like a magnet towards that city with Herod's palace? Did their longing for the comfortable and familiar cloud their judgment? Or was it, was it their premature assumptions about where a king could be found that distracted them? The star had led them all the way here. Now that they saw Jerusalem in, a, in all its splendor, it lived up to their expectations. They didn't stop to consider where the star was leading them. After all, their destination had to be the wealthy, shining city of Jerusalem. The surrounding land was only filled with small, insignificant villages, after all. They didn't know who they were looking for only that it must be someone great. And great people must surely live in uh, the big cities. Royalty, well, they must surely be found in Jerusalem. And it's always much easier to see in hindsight that whatever their reason, they took a wrong turn. Instead of following the guiding star, they headed for the obvious place to find a king and asked at the royal palace. Asking local people is a great way to get directions. And yes, they were told where to find the Messiah. And so they went to Bethlehem, where they found him with his mother. And like the Magi, we too are called to come and find Jesus and worship him. And it doesn't matter whether we're far away and have a long journey ahead of us, or whether we're 
quite close already. We are called to come, to seek the face of God. We've been given a guiding star as well in the scriptures. And we've been given someone to ask for directions in the tradition of the church and the fellowship of believers. And like the Magi, we too are vulnerable to distractions, whether they be other things that appear to outshine the message about Jesus and blur our vision, or our own assumptions of what is worth following. These distractions are real. It's easy to get caught up in other things that seem so much more immediately appealing and satisfying. Good things that aren't bad in themselves, but can take our focus away from Jesus. If we focus too much on those things and too little on seeking God. Family, friends, property, Material blessings, entertainment, and hobbies are all good. But they are not God. But it's not just good things that can take our focus away from seeking Jesus. It could just as well, and perhaps especially in these days, be a dependence on keeping up with the news. And especially as our lives are so affected by national and international news, staying up to date can be helpful, by the way, in order to make informed decisions about whether we should be traveling or staying at home and help us manage risk in an informed manner. But there's enough news to take up all our attention and yet some. But we need to leave some space in our mind so we can turn our attention to Christ and worship him. These and other things that occupy our mind and blur our vision, just as the lights in Jerusalem may have drowned out the lights from the star. Then again, the reason why the Magi took the wrong turn and ended up in the palace instead of the stable, could equally well have been what they felt immediately more appealing. To go into a bright city, stay at the royal palace, and enjoy the company of like-minded people, rather than heading towards a dark little village that didn't appear very promising at all. Likewise, we can get tempted to seek out comfort first, whether it's comfort in material things or perhaps even conforming to a certain standard. We convince ourselves we just want to make sure we're comfortable first or secure. And then we'll be in such a better position to seek God. Or we could potentially want to be looked up to by our neighbors and friends. And we enjoy, enjoy being seen with and by important people. And in some cases, we can even convince ourselves that we're doing it for the sake of the gospel. To give the church a good reputation. Look at what fine people go to church. If we catch ourselves thinking along these lines, we should know that this is also a temptation. And I think that it's something we're all vulnerable to. Seeking splendor and glory rather than the truth. And we're not alone about this. It's something that happens to all of us from time to time, even wise men. They had their expectations of where a king would be born among the mighty and the powerful. And don't we all? But God is showing us a different way, just as he showed the Magi, a way that the scribes and the chief priests could tell them. Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, the seemingly insignificant town, would be the birthplace of the prince 
the shepherd of the people of Israel. So the prophets had said. And this is God turning things upside down. It's not among the mighty and powerful that Christ is to be found, but among the sheep and the shepherds. It's not in a royal palace, but in a stable, not waited on by servants, but with his mother. And the Magi may have made a mistake of going into the wrong town while looking for Jesus. But at least they weren't too proud to ask for directions. Let us be like the Magi too. We are also called to seek him like they were. We may not have a map or a compass, but we can look, follow our guiding star, the scriptures, and not give up before we can kneel before the face of God in worship. And when we wonder whether we're really on the right way, let us ask others for help and direction. We will find that others have gone on the same journey, have left signposts for us to follow too. And let us, like the Magi, stick together on this journey and support each other. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Our prayers today have been prepared by John Shepherd, and I'm reading them on his behalf. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, let us feel your presence as we pray to you. Dear Lord, you sent your Son to guide us, your people, and you sent a star to guide the wise men to baby Jesus. Send us now, we pray, your Holy Spirit to guide our church as we begin a new year. We know that this coming year will bring us challenges and thank you that you will always be present to guide and comfort us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, with so much conflict and persecution in the world, we face the unknown at a difficult and painful time. Let the star of your justice and forgiveness always shine in our hearts that we may give all that we can to your service. Trusting in your word as a light for our path, let us go out into the darkness with faith, confident that we are safe in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Lord, that you are present in our homes and in our lives. 
We pray for our families, neighbours and friends, especially those who are in trouble or in need. We thank you and ask for your blessing on those who have guided and enriched our own lives. Help us offer a light to those in need and graciously accept when a light is offered to us in turn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who have lost their way and been sidetracked, all who are not making the most of their potential or their abilities. We pray for all whose lives are unfulfilled and all who are restricted by oppression or illness, remembering especially the chronically ill, those in constant pain, the depressed and the despairing. Bring them comfort and fortitude and hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are coming to the end of their journey here on earth and pray that they may enter your kingdom and come into your presence. And we pray and thank you for all those who have already come before you and now rejoice in the fullness of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, as we start a new year that looks different from anything we have previously experienced, we thank you that while we may be separated from our families and loved ones, your love for us keeps us united with them. As the wise men were guided by your star, similarly lighten our darkness and light your, our path to you, O Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all, of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, He came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. And bring us at the last with St. George, St. Richard, and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, With all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, We are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. 
We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So for a couple of notices, um, as you will be aware now, our public services or our services of public worship have been suspended um, up to and including the 17th of January, um, and it will be um, it will be a decision that will have to be made uh, further on as we see how uh, the infection rates are. Um, going in this area um, before the decision will be made whether uh, to resume public worship um, anytime soon. And so please do, um, do keep joining us for our services online um, as we will have um, our morning reflections will still be happening as well as um, our Sunday services that will be broadcast online. 
Um, also, for those who are interested in a course, a pilgrim course on the Beatitudes, John Shepherd is starting a course this week. Um, it will be at two o'clock in the afternoon, um, starting on Wednesday. So please do contact John Shepherd um, about um, about that course if you'd like to join, and you will be sent an invitation to join via Zoom. Unfortunately, we are not able to meet in person for these courses either, uh, but a course via Zoom can be a very good alternative when we can't meet. Um, there will also be a course in Christianity Explored um, starting at the beginning of February, and that is for anyone who is new to the Christian faith. And so if you know anyone who might be interested, please do um, let them know about that. If it is your tradition on Epiphany to bring your gifts, your donations, a special donation to the church on Epiphany, um, since we now haven't got public worship um, this week, please do consider making a donation online instead. Um, it can be done via our website, or if you contact one of the parish treasurers, they will be able to provide you with bank account details. And I think that's all for notices at the moment. Um, so, receive the blessing. The Lord be with you. Christ our Lord, to whom kings bowed down in worship and offered gifts, revealed to you his glory and pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And our final hymn today is number 42. Oh, sorry, we're not doing hymn numbers. Um, it is songs of thankfulness and praise. And you will find the words on the website. <laughs>